Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some huge news for more Xbox games that are probably once again being speculated to come into PlayStation itself. Now, as you guys may or may not know, we've been seeing a lot of news on this when it comes to Xbox games coming to PlayStation or the Switch. And I think this has actually been really cool news, mainly because we have had confirmation right now from Phil Spencer, the big head Xbox head honcho, that there is four individual games coming now to outside platforms. So some of this news is slightly on the older side, to get the preface, but as of today, brand new news is coming out that bigger, big, and great games such as, like, say, Starfield are becoming over here to the PlayStation side. So we're going to go talk about this because right now, the part one has been confirmed. Bill Spencer has confirmed that games like Sea of Thieves, Grounded, Hi-Fi Rush will be coming to other outside platforms. But that did leave a really big hole. Because a lot of people were speculating that bigger games, such as, say, maybe Fable in the future, Sonus Hellblade, or even Starfield that just came out, would also be coming to other outside platforms. So we're going to talk about all those brand new leaks and information that came out as of today. So you guys will sit back, relax, and enjoy. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch room down below, and all the other various sell links as well down below. And I appreciate you guys all so much for watching here in the first place. So, first and foremost, if you guys have missed it, this was really, really big in the game cycle. Even about a month ago or so, because this article's even did over here, from from February 4th, like there's new stuff, but just kind of give you guys the recap. A lot of people were assuming, myself as well, for being a part of the fun speculation bubble, that Microsoft might bring a lot more other outside games to things like PlayStation, Day One, PC, and say like Steam, uh, the Switch, or even other things such as like say like you know Steam Deck or other various things. So things like NVIDIA GeForce. Uh, so I was intrigued. I was cool with this. I was down with this, and it kind of seemed like it made a lot of sense for Xbox. Try to bring Game Pass on PlayStation, try to bring Game Pass more on other outside platforms, on TVs or whatever. Expand the Game Pass reach. You also get other people playing, say, Starfield, buying the game for full price if it's on, say, PlayStation, and you're making money. And it didn't seem like too much of a foreign concept because we do have games like Minecraft or old school, like Fallout games or Skyrim on things like the PlayStation or the Switch. So Xbox has already done it, or as well, they've also supported the ongoing, like, versions even after they bought Bethesda so it makes sense at the end of the day and as well we also have seen that Xbox is trying to go and step away a little bit from Xbox to more focus on publishing and things like Game Pass and all of that but this was a month ago I myself kind of thought it would be smart if Xbox did, but after the official statements from Phil Spencer, he was like, hey, we're going to test the waters, going to see how it goes. We give you like Hi-Fi Rush and see if these, see if people buy it. And I think it's kind of smart for business sense. But this was a really big news. Although a lot of people also then were saying, hey, we never heard about Starfield, and then we didn't really see the leaks on this. And then kind of everyone kind of took a step back, which is fine. It happens. That's kind of how the news cycle works. But as of today, we're seeing even more and bigger news when it comes to Starfield. And this is where it gets a little bit more on the fun side, where we saw this over here on some gaming leaks and people collecting all the tweets and all this saying that Starfield is coming to the PS5 in November or December. So as of maybe this holiday season, well-established Xbox IPs are also going to be coming to the PlayStation 5 in 2025. Now, once again, because I don't want to like restart the cycle crazily, this is just a leak, rumor, and speculation. But this one does have a little bit more extra merit. Because right now, a lot of people are calling out Jez Corden, who are basically saying, like, hey, they lost the trust in him, they didn't approve the leaks, and they kind of got a lot of these leaks wrong. I also want to go and use this one second to clarify for me. I kind of like just like reporting on the news or reporting on other outside leaks, because I think speculation and rumors and kind of keeping up in the date and all the news is usually pretty fun. So I like seeing all this type of stuff. That's how I kind of structure up my channel. But the big thing is that this leaker does also seem to have a lot more outside sources and also has had a lot of big stuff too as well. Where, number one, and this is going to kind of add more merit to what I'm about to say, they claim that Ghost of Tsushima would be announced for PC on March 5th back on February 28th. So about like a few days ago, they said that Ghost of Tsushima was going to be announced on PC. And what do you have it over here on the PlayStation official account saying Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cup coming to PC on May 16th? PC features in pre-planned purchase unlocks details. So basically confirming right now that their initial leak was right. We also did see, and we also got this thing on a video yesterday, if you guys saw, that Ghost of Tsushima 2 seemed to also be confirmed slash leaked, and as well, Ghost of Tsushima on PC. We also covered this, I believe, as of yesterday, too, as well. So a lot of the leaks that we're reporting on and also seeing are also seeming to line up pretty well. So to give a little bit of extra, like, merit on all this news, this was also showcased. But they also had a statement over here, too, from Silk Knight that went announced saying, the announcements won't stop. Starfield will be announced for PlayStation 5 with a release between November and December 2024. The 2025 plan is even bigger, featuring well-established franchises in the Xbox universe too as well. 
So, when it comes to this news, we are now seeing leakers who apparently do have a lot of sources and back, and who have also been right with the leak I just showed you guys out here, stating that they want to bring Starfield in other big various Xbox games to PlayStation. Now, to go and put a little bit more extra thoughts on this one, someone like Jez Corden, not calling him out, I don't really care, I have no stakes on this type of stuff, I like seeing leaks, I like seeing opinions, and I'm not really like a hater or think like, oh, you're gonna, I'm never gonna trust you ever again. Because it's always fun to go and see what people say regardless. But right now, Jez Gordon was also kind of a big, I think, person who was like, yeah, I never heard of any of these rumors. They backtracked a lot. And a lot of folks are very, very anti their opinion on this one too as well. Uh, just a lot of people were not happy with this. A lot, a lot of people were kind of judging this too when it comes to all these people. But at the same time, when it comes to games as a whole, I think this makes sense. Starfield was rumored quite heavily about a month ago before this big Xbox leaks that it would be coming to PlayStation. So maybe those initial leaks had a little bit more merit because people, like I said, they kind of ramped up and then we got the official Phil Spencer where he's like, well, we're down to test the waters in the future, but right now, Starfield, uh, not no Starfield, but Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, you know, Grounded, we'll test the waters. If it goes good, we'll release more stuff. So there actually might have been some more merit to it. Basically, it might have been like the really big long-term two-year plan where over time, They'll go release more games. Over time, they'll see and kind of, you know, adjust as it goes. But it almost makes no sense to not release these games. These games are already made. Uh, if you want to sell them on PlayStation, you can get the full $60 or $70 for it. And as well, PlayStation is like... A bigger install base. They have more people playing the games. For console folks, it makes sense. Starfield was made mostly for consoles in mind. Think the Xbox. But as well, it also lets PlayStation, well, number one, make money, and also lets Xbox also make more money. They already made the game. So if everyone who already bought it on Xbox, who bought it on Game Pass, they're already out, they're already done, release it on PlayStation because that lets you go get more individual sales. And once again, I said that they have also still had a pretty okay working relationship. Minecraft is still being supported on PlayStation. All the old school Fallout and Skyrim games are still being supported. And I do believe also ESO, the MMO, is also, I still believe, being supported too as well. So it's not like they're against it, like these games already on PlayStation. So I'm cool with this. I'm down with this. And I think a lot of people shouldn't really understand this too as well. And this is why, like, once again, some folks are kind of on the upset side. Where we're kind of seeing some of these comments they are saying, just last December, he was tweeting that a certain, uh, it was certain that not a single Xbox game would come to PlayStation. And this is where they go and say from all this, where basically everyone's like, hey, no, not this again. And some people are calling out these rumors and everything out here too as well. And this is why it's a little bit conflicting because they're also saying over here from Jez Corden, who a lot of people are kind of against right now, saying like it's not good, they don't trust the plans or whatever, is that they're saying that basically no one is working on the star, like basically on Starfield right now for PlayStation, which was intriguing because once again, the leaker who we showed you guys over here before, you guys can see these tweets right here on the page itself. And also the official PlayStation tweet right here. Confirmed. Like, we're, like we're literally seeing it. Like, we see it up in here. Uh, as we go and see this, it seems like it might be confirmed. Like, I don't want to say confirmed, confirmed until we see it from official sources. But from leaks, it makes sense. And once again, we saw these rumors popping up. We saw these things being spread around everywhere. And most people were down with it. I think the overall public reception was like, cool. Like, hey, I have a PlayStation. I can finally play Starfield. Cool. Like, I'm down with this. Or, like, I can finally go maybe play Fable or Hellblade. Xbox users were not happy. But rightfully so, I wouldn't want them to have a chance. If I spend my $500 on my console, I don't want other consoles also getting this extra merit. Like, I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, if you get, like, that timed exclusivity, like how PlayStation does for a lot of their games, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, give it, like, a year, release it up on other platforms afterwards. Anyone who really wants to play the game initially... I think that seems like the industry standard, so it seems fine. But this also opens up a cool, fun theory where other games might come out too as well. Where other games such as, like, say, Fable or Sonos Hellblade, like, they could come out in the future. Like, they're not going to be only locked to Xbox or Indiana Jones too as well. We saw that rumor that they might be coming to PlayStation. So it's kind of like lets me go and revisit the future in standard for games because at the end of the day we might have all these games coming to PlayStation or the Switch or maybe have a timed exclusivity, which I always thought, say for Indiana Jones, you have it out for six months or a year, then you can release it on PlayStation, on Steam, on PC, if it's, you know, for whatever reason, if it's not blocked up on Steam. And this works out. Or so, like I said, for Starfield, if it's released for this holiday season, that gives kind of like a win-win for both. That gives PlayStation a holiday game to go and release, let people get excited for and drive software sales, but also, once again, is letting Xbox kind of scratch each other's backs. Or then anyone who's buying the game on PlayStation is also driving up sales for Xbox on the holiday season. And as of right now, I don't think we have any major big holiday releases on both the PlayStation and Xbox, so why not have that one truce at least for one year and kind of, kind of let it go and work? So I want to hear your thoughts and comments and everything down below, because leaks are fun, and I do think this has some merit, and I didn't think the leaker also has some extra gusto too. So make sure you guys 
are subscribed with the notifications on we have the twitter and twitch from down below if you guys would like to go and follow we have all the other various links too as well and i appreciate you guys all so much for watching in the first place